Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kieran Mack, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's show. Well, hello, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. Today is Friday, the 4th of February, 2022, and we'll start off with those daily COVID numbers, as we always do. There were 20 more COVID-19 fatalities and 9,172 new cases reported during the previous 24 hours, the Public Health Ministry announced on Thursday morning. This compared with the 22 coronavirus-related fatalities and 8,587 new cases reported on Wednesday morning. The spokeswoman for the Centre for COVID-19 Situation Administration said in the afternoon briefing that the 21 most recent fatalities were aged between 38 and 92 years old. One was a 28-week pregnant woman in Satun who was not vaccinated. In total, 11 of the deaths were people not vaccinated against COVID-19. Another had received only one dose and five others had their second dose more than four months ago. Chambari Public Office reported 399 new cases today and one death. Most new cases are in Chambari, which had 95, Siracha, which had 105, and Bang Lamong Patia areas, which had 90 cases. There are now 3,913 patients in care. And finally, Phuket Health officials reported 557 new cases, out of which 395 were local and 162 were from abroad. There were no deaths, and there are now 3,941 people in care. So the numbers have taken a little uptick, but hopefully uh, things will start to even its way out over the next couple of weeks and we'll see a downturn and we'll hopefully start to see life return to normality here in the wonderful kingdom of Thailand. And moving along to a story that we've kind of touched on over the last week or two, Bangkok to equip 100 zebra crossings with traffic lights in two weeks. The Bangkok Metropolitan Administration plans to install pedestrian-operated traffic lights at about 100 dangerous zebra crossings in the city to provide better safety, the Deputy Bangkok Governor, Lt. Gen. Sopon, said today. He said the work would be completed in two weeks, adding that AI surveillance cameras would help be installed, with the work expected to be completed in a month, to catch motorists or motorcyclists who do not stop at the red light to allow pedestrians to cross. One crossing to be equipped with such devices is the one in Paya Thai district where an eye specialist at Chilanakorn University Faculty of Medicine was struck and killed by a large motor vehicle being ridden by a non-commissioned police officer on January 21st. The incident caused a public uproar and calls for increased safety for pedestrians on zebra crossings. The deputy governor also said that workers have been improving several zebra crossings by extending the crossing space and painting them for high visibility. There are 3,280 zebra crossings in Bangkok alone, but only 1,277 of them were equipped with flashing lights to warn drivers to slow down when approaching. 226 of them are equipped with push to walk buttons and only 430 were painted in red. Now the Deputy Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police Bureau said that the fine for drivers caught by surveillance cameras breaking road traffic laws is currently set by a maximum of 1,000 baht but it will be increased to 4,000 baht soon. He also urged the public to take pictures of drivers who failed to stop at zebra crossings to allow pedestrians to walk and to send them to the Royal Thai Police Headquarters so they can claim a reward from the fines imposed on the violators. Now, that is just the current situation in relation to zebra crossing, something very basic that seemingly can't be adhered to here in this country. Though, nice to see that if you do dob in somebody for crossing through or sitting on a zebra crossing, you can claim part of the fine that they will... uh, have to pay so that may uh, increase the amount of people getting actual fines but just to clarify now today the 24 hour road accident report which was from yesterday there were 71 deaths that's a new record high 2753 injuries on the road 78 percent of deaths were motorcyclists and there has been 1465 deaths in the last 33 days or about on average 44 deaths a day which is just ridiculous. So things do need to change here on the roads. We all know that the main problem is education and driver education along with police enforcement. And I think if they were managed to get both of them corrected at some point in time, things would drastically get better on the roads here in Thailand. 
And moving along, scaled down Cobra Gold exercises to be held from February 22nd to March 4th. This year, the Cobra Gold military exercises will be held between February 26th and March 4th and will be somewhat scaled down again due to the COVID-19 pandemic, according to a Thai military source. The source, who asked not to be identified, said that despite being a heavy year, the region's largest annual military exercise involving the US and its allies and friends will be limited and will involve fewer military personnel than originally planned. The annual exercise alternates between light and heavy years with varying numbers of troops and programs of activities. This time, fewer than 2,000 international troops will participate. Last year, only 600 from the US took part. In normal years, the exercise sees more than 10,000 troops taking part. There will be no live fire demonstrations, amphibious landings or assaults. Last October, during his visit to Bangkok, commander of the US Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral John C. Aquino, reiterated that when COVID-19 subsided, the exercise would return to full scale in response to mutual security needs. He added the US-Thai alliance continues to play a crucial role in advancing their shared values and interests across the Indo-Pacific. While some of the scheduled drills will be cancelled due to COVID-19, activities involving command post humanitarian civic assistance as well as some field training exercises will be held. Due to the pandemic, some of the activities this year were focused on public health issues. The seven members of Cobra Gold are the United States, Thailand, South Korea, Malaysia, Japan, Indonesia and Singapore, as well as observers and additional participants from other nations. China also participated in the previous four annual exercises in certain areas related to humanitarian programs. Now next up is a story I spotted today which is very odd and completely opposite of what the CCSA actually said today, but the Ministry of Public Health confirms no legal obligation for people to wear face masks. Thailand's public health minister confirmed that there are no laws forcing people to wear face masks, but he also sought cooperation from all parties, including Thai citizens and overseas tourists, in order to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 outbreak. Concerning warnings from the Centre for COVID-19 Situation Administration that people might be fined for not wearing a face mask, Deputy Prime Minister and Public Health Minister Anatan Sharavakul stated that the Ministry of Public Health and related agencies had not reported this and the matter is still under consideration. The Deputy Prime Minister said that the suggestion is beneficial as the most effective prevention protocol, but it should be first be evaluated by all parties, emphasising that enforcement is unnecessary if everyone cooperates in adhering to the prevention measures. He is concerned, however, about some international tourists who do not wear face masks while in Thailand and stated that the ministry will discuss the problem with the CCSA. He understands that the practice may not be used in other countries, but he encourages them to comply with the country's public health regulations. When asked if stricter measures would be enforced if infection cases reach 10,000, the public health minister responded that the situation is still within the Department of Disease Control's epidemiological scenarios, with severe cases not increasing and more people getting vaccinated, and that adjustments will not be made at this time. Nonetheless, he asked all parties to be cautious and work together to prevent and contain the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, what is very interesting about this is He's correct in what he says when he says there is no law, but that is not really true either. There is a mandate under the emergency decree that has been set by the CCSA. Now that mandate is then enacted by each province and the province puts it into its rules and regulations for the province that are normally released at the beginning of each month and then uh, published to the various different agencies and to the general public. So within that, each province has that it's obligatory to wear a face mask and the fine is anywhere between 1 to 20,000 baht. There is no law, but there is a mandate that's backed up by the emergency decree. Now, if the emergency decree were to be cancelled right now, then the wearing of face masks would also not be necessary because there is no law to say that you have to wear it. But it is a mandate, and the mandate is still punishable by a fine, which people have been finding out in Phuket recently. I've been reading a lot of people have been getting fined for not wearing face masks or getting warnings and being told next time it happens you will get one. But that's just an interesting bit of information. Now, it seems that the government are in complete disarray as usual. We have the CCSA who are basically in charge at the moment saying one thing and then yet again the, I don't know what the word is for this guy from the Ministry of Public Health, but Anotan, whatever, 
coming out saying something different and I'm sure tomorrow there'll be a clarification on all this probably similar along the lines of what I'm saying right now so we'll obviously keep an eye on the story and report back if and when he corrects himself sometime in the future. Now speeding along, arrivals with COVID mainly coming from Russia and Kazakhstan. Now most of the tourists arriving in Phuket found infected with COVID-19 upon arrival are coming from Russia or Kazakhstan, the provincial governor Narang Wunsi said on Wednesday. Mr. Narang said about 300 new cases were being diagnosed each day in Phuket and about 100 of the infections were in people arriving from abroad. The new arrivals with COVID-19 were mainly from Russia or Kazakhstan, he said. Mr. Narang said this would be reported to the central COVID-19 monitoring agencies to investigate why so many were coming from those countries, particularly Russia. On the overall economic condition in Phuket, he said things seemed to be going well for all concerned, business operators and the people looked happier. According to the Tourism Authority of Thailand, from July 1st last year until January 25th, Phuket had earned about 14 billion baht in direct income from tourism and about 33 billion baht had been put in circulation, he said. The situation looks promising, he added. Mr. Narang said that in the past week, there were two stories about Phuket that received nationwide attention. One was an article by British journalist Jonathan Miller about his stay at a Phuket quarantine hotel, and the other was about a taxi passenger being overcharged. The governor said he looked at both stories in a positive way. What happened should be taken as lessons, an opportunity to turn crisis into opportunity, he added. Now, the deputy director of Fashira Hospital said vaccination centers were giving a fourth dose against COVID-19 to between four to 5,000 people per day at Gymnasium 4 building at Sapin Hin, at X-Terminal building at Phuket International Airport, at Jung Silong Shopping Center in Patong, and at Fashira Hospital in Phuket. Another vaccination center would be open next week at the central department store, she added. As of February 1st, based on the target to vaccinate 547,584 people, 88.41% have received their first shot, 85% of those had received their second, and 56% had received third, and just over 20% the fourth. Dr. Whittier said Phuket has been supplied with 1,950 doses of the Pfizer vaccine for children, while 30,000 children have been registered for inoculation. Vaccination of children aged 5 to 11 would begin on February 4, with those in high-risk groups given priority first. There is a question to be asked. Why are so many infected people coming from Russia and Kazakhstan? Now, the consensus online seems to be either that uh, the Sputnik vaccine is not very good or they're using fake COVID-19 PCR certificates to get in. And I'm not quite sure which one it might be. I'll leave that to you to guess. And maybe somebody has a reason, a legitimate reason why. I mean, this is what I read online. This is what people are talking about. But yes, there are definitely fake PCR certificates out there. And I wonder, is this one of the reasons that people are testing positive on arrival at the airport? Now, I'd love to know your opinion, guys, as always. And you can leave it down there in the comments section. I also think it's funny is that somehow uh, these very bad stories from Jonathan Miller, the uh, journalist who wrote about the quarantine hotel fiasco and the taxi driver who was caught harassing and being exceptionally rude to uh, Thai tourists, by the way, uh, how this could be turned in from a crisis into an opportunity. I have absolutely no idea. The taxi mafia is completely out of control in Phuket. And I know I said I'm going to do a story today about it, but actually I'm going to leave that story to Sunday and we're going to just dedicate Sunday's show to uh, this whole issue with the taxi uh, mafia in Phuket and kind of covering it a bit more in depth and kind of looking at this case in relation to a Thai tourist I mean, we've all heard about what happens to foreign tourists but it's good to focus on how this Thai uh, tourist was actually treated as well and these kind of things are important to look at because it just shows that these guys do not care they do not care about the law they do not care about anything so we will look about this on Sunday morning show but in general, I, I, I find it quite interesting that the, the governor seems to be in cloud cuckoo land here that, you know, businesses and people look happier. So that means everything's OK. I, I just don't get it. Look, go around, mate, and have a look. There's still so many shops closed. There's still so many restaurants still closed. Businesses, empty shops up for rent, massage shops closed. People still getting food handouts in Phuket. So look, wake up and stop trying to 
gloss over right the part that you should really be focusing on right now you know there's still people who are in trouble in phuket who need help your own people thai citizens who need help and you need to be focusing on that and not worrying about you know people look happier so everything's a-okay again but again we'll move on to the next story push for bubbles amid tourism drive the tourism and sports ministry plans to continue travel bubble discussions with short haul destinations following this week's resumption of the test and go scheme the country wants to continue travel bubble initiatives particularly with nearby countries and generate enormous cross-border traffic such as lao cambodia and malaysia said tourism sports minister pia pat rachapakarn he said that the matter could be up for discussion when Prime Minister Priya chan Shah welcomes his Malaysian counterpart to Thailand later this month. The ministry plans to visit Beijing for the Winter Olympics this month and wants to use the opportunity to seek further updates from China's Ministry of Culture and Tourism regarding a travel agreement. Tourism Authority of Thailand Governor Yutasak Supasorn said 35,046 tourists registered for the Thailand Pass during its first day of reopening on February 1, of which 31,343 were for the test and go scheme. As hotels must now verify Thailand Pass bookings via the new Thailand Pass Hotel and Swap system, 20% of guests were verified as of February 1. Mr. Yutasek said hoteliers have to verify bookings within 30 hours or registration will be rejected and tourists must resubmit the application. Now the TCT vice president said even though the tourism sector was improving, strict testing rules were an obstacle to growth as they deter tourists. He said locations that require no RT-PCR tests on arrivals, such as Dubai, the Maldives and Turkey, can now attract more arrivals than in 2019, before the pandemic, and such reopening policies have not worsened their outbreaks. If there is no new surge in cases and fatalities after the first month of test and go resumption, the government must consider dropping the RT-PCR test requirements. If it does, the country is projected to see at least 5 million tourists, Mr. Fischette said. The TCT's recent Tourism Confidence Index in the fourth quarter of last year stood at 47, improving from 7 in the third quarter. However, this confidence level is weak compared with 62 in the same period of 2020. The index polled 740 tourism-related operators between November 20th and December 10th, 2021. A reading below 100 indicates low tourism confidence. In a bid to enhance competitiveness, the council is working on a tourism clinic by hosting workshops in pilot areas like Phuket, Krabi and Panya, said Chanan Sirasat, TCP's president. TCT wants the government to allocate a 200 million baht budget, of which 100 million is for reskilling, an upskilling program with the rest to support tourism development. So the TCT are basically on the right path. They understand that without or with this PCR testing regime of two tests after you get to Thailand, tourism is not going to grow. It's going to stay stagnant. I would also query this 20% of um, test and go has been already approved on the first day. I don't believe that's even possible at all based on how slowly hotels are working even some hotels don't even know that you're meant to do this yet you know verify the a hotel booking the pcr booking and the transportation before it's then sent over to the ministry of foreign affairs for their side of approval so now I, I i think we can take a lot of these numbers with a uh, pinch of salt here you know they're not going to be very accurate the tourism authority the sports or the tourism and sports ministry they're all going to prop the numbers up to make themselves look good of course we'll never know what the real numbers are because you know how would we how would anybody know what the real numbers are i guess the man on the ground who owns a hotel or a restaurant and bar he might be able to tell you what the real numbers are but um travel bubbles with other countries well we have the test and go program so how would these travel bubbles work would people just be allowed to come in and out without pcr tests i i don't understand how the whole concept would work they seem to be holding out for china as well a lot i mean i think most of us know at this stage that china will not be open this year i mean they're still chasing the zero covid dream and the idea that they're going to reopen their country and let tourists come in and out without quarantine is just you know ludicrous at this stage i mean really looking at china you must be thinking at least two years before they reopen again and, and probably the government of china are probably happy with this i mean tourism in china as far as i know is very very busy domestic tourism so they may not be losing out too much at the end of the day but let's uh hope that the pcr test that the tourism council they have some pull and can start to focus other agencies as well on this whole concept of the pcr test for me at the end of the day scrapping the pcr tests on arrival is probably the 
move that will send tourism numbers up. And if that's their goal, is to increase tourism, then that's the way they need to go. And moving along, 23,000 Thai students' data up for sale on the dark web. The university's President's Council said this morning that the security of its central admission system has been upgraded after the personal data of about 23,000 students was advertised for sale on the dark web. The university's president's council insisted that the leaked admission data, which included personal information and examination results, was only current through last May after anger erupted over the data breach. Hashtag ban TCAS was surging on Thai Twitter this morning in reference to the Thai University Central Admission System or TCAS. The TCAS 2022 system has been changed to a new model with an improved website where sensitive file data is stored in a private format that cannot be directly accessed, the council statement read. Acknowledging that the data had been left in the open, an institutional shortcoming of Thailand's unsophisticated IT security, it said user data was now only available upon request for a limited period. The data was listed for sale in an online marketplace for leaks. The data set includes students' full names, identification numbers, and examination results. It also includes codes indicating their priority, application ID, ranking, and unspecified scores. Selling data ID card number Thailand 23K read the forum entry posted. It was still available as of late Thursday morning. The ID card number came out like this. How will you be responsible? I told you before, just an apology isn't enough. This is so ineffective. Do you dare to do anything else? Lotus and Run tweeted along with hashtag ban TCAS. The admission system said that the records were only a fraction of its more than 826,000 records, but it did apologize for the breach and said it would file a complaint with the police and the IT ministry. Unencrypted, unsecured data repositories have resulted in a steady stream of breaches that have disclosed the personal information of travelers, immigrants and citizens alike across all government sectors over the last year. Just last June, a website for foreign nationals to register vaccinations began coughing up their private data. Records of travelers seeking to enter Thailand late last year was also accessible with very little effort. And finally, the Phuket News Data Report. Phuket to start vaccinating young children. Phuket health officials will start providing vaccination injections to children aged 5 to 11 years old starting from February 4th as the campaign to vaccinate all people on the island against COVID-19 continues. Water projects key to Phuket's future, says the governor. Phuket Governor Narang Wunsi conducted site inspections of several projects to prevent flooding and droughts yesterday, noting that better management of Phuket's watershed areas were vital for the island's sustainable future. And finally, Phuket market prices under watch. Ministry of Commerce officers have begun inspecting vendors at markets to ensure customers are not deceived into paying much more for the purchase than they should and inspecting fresh produce retailers and wholesalers to prevent hoarding. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.